friends the issue is very serious and it should have been made into a national debate but uh, ironically uh, neither those who opposed and no no those who advocate had enough facts do you had got certain suggestions from their faculty that manu should be taught in law curriculum and opposition came and we see was a covert i would say i would say rather the government was covert because if you are introducing manu the opponent should have been happy why they could have exposed the mal practices of hinduism as they claim manu has given they have missed up us rather i would say that uh, they didn't want the people to know the truth they have their knowledge on the basis of uh, what they call uh, what uh, dr ambedkar he bant uh, manu samriti but uh, what dr ambedkar himself say in this book who was the shudras firstly he has said that shudras were one of the four varnas but from the point of view of understanding the sanskrit he says i cannot claim mastery over sanskrit language i admit this deficiency but i do not see why it should disqualify me altogether from operating in this field this very little of sanskrit literature which is not available in english very right literature is available sanskrit literature is available and those who claim following dr ambedkar and uh, these days that slogan jai bhim jai meem is becoming very common i would advise them to read this book by dr bhim rao ambedkar pakistan or the partition of india but that is not the topic of issue of today but talking about the literature the english literature that is there what does it say the firstly you have with us two great historians but before that those the followers of baba sahib they claim that uh, baba sahib burnt manu samriti but which manu samriti it was it was written by some sumati bhargav manu samriti has been written by manu or by sumati bhargav who was this sumati bhargav they don't know even they even don't know who was manu they even don't know how many manu were there they even don't know who amongst them wrote manu samriti forget about their reading manu samriti but what has been said by the historians what others said previously i won't go into that i'll just talk about uh, the two modern historians they are the leading ones these days one is patrick olivelle and what he writes about manu in his book olivelle there is a book. this is the book and i give only extract from that this book is the law code of manu a new translation by patrick olivelle and this translation hardly has 50 or 60 pages of and rest of it is manu samriti original and what he writes on page 2021 in the preface although manu derived much of his material from earlier sources actually this information is factually incorrect because manu has made it clear at every place that this is the original interpretation whatever sources he had he had only vedas in front of him his work is not merely an anthology the ancient vedic text tatri samhita records what appears to have been a proverbial saying whatever manu has said is medicine if tatri samhita says what manu has said is medicine 
obviously manu has to be older than that but he says the opposite another point in the same page is a close examination of mdh Uh, Manu Dharma Shastra he briefly describes as MDH and its executive 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 structure. However, makes it abundantly clear that the text ascribed to Brigu is not an addition or version of pre-existing text, but an original composition. He is contradicting himself that way. This was conceived and put together by a single individual with extraordinary ability and a systematic mind. so either the previous statement was correct or this one and then another uh, interesting thing he says i have used manu here as a short hand term for the historical author of this law court the name of the author is unknown as are any details of his life the most we can say is that he was a learned brahmin from somewhere in north india manu was a brahmin and he lived somewhere in north india this is the historian the great historian talking about he was a kshatriya everybody knows and his whole genealogy is available at n number of places his whole life history is available but this gentleman the great historian he knows nothing about it so and then you have uh, another historian Uh, then uh, we have uh, Wendy Doniger, and he writes with Brian Smith, "The Laws of Manu Penguin, 2000." Hmm. What they say, the Law of Manu, like all other works we have from the ancient period in India, was composed by members of the social class called Brahmins or priests. Indeed, the text is not only by the priests, but to a large extent for the priests. the subject of the rules of dharma laid out here is often the householder priest sometimes this is declared explicitly for example whole chapter 4 and 3 to 86 and 4 to 59 and even more often it is assumed implicitly the fact is chapter 4 deals with grihastha ashrama and uh, the other two that he talks about he talks about uh, the shlokas which are responsible for those things the problem is these historians and their predecessors they were hell bent on demonize our ancient literature i won't call them as hindu texts because there was no religion as such there was no religion to talk about when we started talk about hinduism it was basically with islam before that nothing was there so you cannot compare Uh, sanatan with any other one but despite all this they try to create hatred among the people and they want the way british wanted our own history our own knowledge our own treasure of wisdom must not be interpreted the way it should be see for example d n jha in his book ancient india in the historical outline page 197 he concludes there is no doubt that ancient indians made remarkable progress in a variety of fields but these advances should not be blown out of proportions they cannot enable us to compete with the knowledge system and science and technology of modern times dn jha wants to compare our wisdom of that time with the knowledge that, that we have today and it is not only dn jha Dhanja concludes these words, but R. S. Sharma, in the beginning of his book, Relevance of the Past to the Present, the book is India's Ancient Past. On page four, he writes, "There is no doubt that Indians of old made progress in a variety of fields, but these advances alone cannot enable us to compete with the achievements of the modern society, science, and technology." I would say this is the most ridiculous way. of interpreting our claims our achievements our progress during the ancient times these two great historians they don't want us to appreciate what we achieved there because our present achievements are much more agreed
But what way it is to compare that period with this period? If they had to compare, they should have compared ancient India with the ancient world. And if they say that we must not rejoice over that achievement <coughs> because our present achievements are much more, means we don't have the right to rejoice over present achievements as well. Because our tomorrow's achievements will be many more and better quality than present one. I think ours are the only historians, those want that we should not be proud of our past, the legacy that British started and these historians continue. They claim themselves to be progressive. I won't comment on that. But what Nietzsche said about Manu Samriti, Nietzsche is considered one of the, or rather the greatest philosophers of Europe by many of the people. He said it very clearly, that you cannot compare Bible with Manu Samriti. Bible is a pack of dust. Manu Samriti gives you aroma. Manu Samriti gives you a way of life. And if you want to understand, you should try to understand Manu Samriti, the way Manu communicated and the way it has been interpreted uh, by a number of people. I wish that you people should read Banu Samriti. I have read Banu Samriti uh, in three ways. And all the three books were written by Dr. Suryan Kumar, Ash Prakashan. First is Banu Samriti. I read it translation word by word, then translation, and then full in Sanskrit. Then Banu Samriti ka Purmulyankan, and then Vishuddha Manu Samriti. I don't want you to read it as a religious manner. I want you to read as a critic. Read it that originally there were 680 shlokas and all the others, they are interpolations. I'm going to specifically tell them. They claim that Shudras were treated this way and Shudras were treated that way and women were treated this way and women were treated that way as per Manu Samriti. I wish they had quoted, I'll quote, I'll give you the reference and I'll give you the things which uh, uh, the historians, uh, our historians and their historians have talked about. I'll just here, here give one example. The, the, there was a book, Jati Bhed Viveksar, written in 1861 and reprinted in 1865 and published by the great reformer Jyoti Bapule, written by T.T. Padwal. And everybody has quoted this book without reading Manu. And say, Brazil and Ohalanon, caste and its historic histories in the colonial India, a reprisal, 2017. She writes on page 432 to 436, Manu and other ancient texts of religious law laid down savage punishment for the lower caste and greatest leniency for the higher caste transgressors, such that the latter often felt that they were above law. This is attributed to Manu. But what Manu actually says, chapter 8, shlok 336 to 338, he says, For the same crime, king deserves 1,000 times the punishment given to an ordinary person. A thousand times. Besides, for a theft, a shudra must get 8 times the punishment given to an ordinary person. A Vaishya 16 times. Akshatriya 32 times and a Brahmin 64 times or 100 times or 128 times because higher the status, greater the expectation from the person to follow the norm. I wish you go through Manu Samriti, the shlokas I have just quoted, but it is only a beginning. I just want you to be curious to know more about Manu and know it in such a way that if you want to criticize him, you criticize with proof, not interpolations, not what Donegar said, or not what Olivier said, or R.S. Sharma said, or Romila Thapar said. Anyone worth the substance with due reference, 
विद द टेक्स दैट गोज अप वट इन इस्लाम दे कॉल शान नजूल दैट काइंड ऑफ रेफरेंसेज हैव टू बी देयर दीज हिस्टोरियंस दे डेलीबरेटली स्किप द रेफरेंसेज i'll 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 expose them next time and i will tell you what manu samriti said in those 680 shlokas the original ones i'll continue please comment thank you